Welcome to the Off-Road Adventure Show. Over the next two weeks, Jamie and I are going to be exploring this stunning Victorian high country. We're going to show you some of the best four-wheel drive challenges, some interesting history, and some of the best campsites you'll ever get to see. Also this week, Starlo is out with me and Pitwater Pete targeting squid, Caroline's going jetpacking on the Gold Coast, and Adrian's cooking up one of his favourite rabbit dishes on the Ozpig. Desert mountains covered in snow, from the crisp blue sky to all the mud below. We'll take you where the fish are always on the go. Gonna show you lots of places no one else will ever know. So get out of your house, it ain't very hard. Well, all the best adventures start in your own backyard. The off road adventure show. Dargo is located 240 kilometres south of Albury or 320 kilometres east of Melbourne, and it's an ideal spot to fuel up and stock up on supplies. Oh mate, I love the high country. There's just so much stuff out here to drive. Yeah, you're not wrong. And it's just, it's so crisp, it's so beautiful, especially at this time of the year. And I see you've opted for a little bit of luxury this time, mate, bringing the easy trail along. Ah oh, well, there's only one way to test any product. It's get it out there and try it. Yeah, copy that. Well, let's hit the hills, mate. We're following a route called the Wanangatta Drive, one of Victoria's iconic four-wheel drive trips. Our first destination is the old gold mining town of Talbotville, just a short drive from Dargo. Talbotville sprang to life when gold was found in the Crooked River in 1860, but vanished when the gold ran out. Today, Talbotville is a beautiful camping area bordered by the Crooked River. Next up, it was time to take a trek up the Crooked River. All right, we might jump out and have a look, eh? Mate, last time I was here, it was the middle of summer. The water was pretty low, but it might be a little bit higher now, this well, time of year. Yeah, I think you're going to get out of it pretty lightly. We can see the bottom, so it shouldn't be too much trouble. In most cases, you need to walk these water crossings. And in this case, we don't need to. We can see the bottom nice and clear. But the reason being, you never know the depth of it. And so by just taking a guess, you can get yourself in all sorts of trouble. So you've got to do it. Let's yeah. do it. Good advice, mate. Let's hit it. All right, mate. Well, I'm just going to go second gear later range. I'm going to stick with this high stuff I can see here a little bit to the left and then duck across at the last second. I'll follow your line. And that is a good little tip. When crossing a river, it is always good to follow somebody else's line if they're in front of you. When you're crossing all these rivers here in the Crooked River, and how much fun is this? Here's a tip to make it a little bit easier for the next bloke following you and everyone else after that. Is on the exits, just stop and pause for a moment, let all the water wash off your car before you take off up the dirt road. That's gonna minimize erosion on these exits and make it easier for everyone. Mate, the, uh, the exit on this one might be a little bit interesting with the trailer. Yeah, copy that. I was just looking, I'm thinking, geez, that's looking a bit steep going down there. But I can see the exit now. And I think the water's just a little bit deeper on the other side too to make it interesting. All right, you call me up when you think it's good to go. Oh yeah, that, that'll be a bit of fun, mate. Bring it on over. On my way. Exits can always be a challenge, especially when you're towing a trailer. But take it easy, put the momentum in when you need to, like I am now. And yep, no problem to walk in the park. After mastering all the 23 river crossings, there's just one way out, and that's the Bulltown Spur Track, and it's not for the faint-hearted. This one will test out the trucks and the trailer. Well, here we are, mate, the Bulltown Spur Track. This one's an absolute cracker. It's steep, it's loose, and it's got some of the tightest switchbacks I've ever driven in the high country. Yeah, copy that. I've, uh, I've only heard of it. I've never seen it, so it'll be a great challenge. This is the first of those really sharp switchbacks, mate. Right, uh, I'm going to take it nice and wide with this trailer on. You know, gear selection in this steep stuff is absolutely critical. I've elected to go with second gear low range here just so I can get up a little bit of momentum when I need it. But I don't want to be going too fast. It's a real balancing act. When you drive flat out, 
up these sort of things, you're causing all sorts of grief. You're putting the drive line under pressure, you're putting the trailer under a lot of pressure, and it bounces, and it'll bounce side to side and take you all out of shape, and you can have an accident very easily. So take your time, drive up here like I am, nice and easy. I'm listening to the motor, I'm not pushing it too hard. As I need momentum, I put the throttle down a bit more. I've got a top campsite picked out for tonight and something pretty special at sunset if you're up for it. Absolutely. Take me there. Let's do it. This camping spot isn't part of the Wanangatta Drive, but it is a special place all the same. And from here, it isn't too far to one of my favourite spots in the high country, the Blue Rag Range. One of the must-do tracks in the high country is the Blue Rag Range Trail. It does get a grade from Vic Parks from time to time, so it can range from an easy drive to one that can seriously get the blood pumping. Well, mate, I told you I was going to take you somewhere special for sunset, and I reckon it gets much better than this. Well, I can agree. I can't wait to actually get up to the very top of it. I mean, like, just driving this track now and getting to see the views, well, I can only, I can only wonder what's at the end of it. Woohoo! What a view. This place is just everything that makes the Victorian high country good. It's got it all. 360 degrees, look at it. Wow. That is just exhilarating. That's breathtaking. Now I know where the saying comes from, you know. Camper trailers are becoming more and more affordable these days, but how do you know you're getting a decent camper for your money? Well, we've been putting one of Easy Trail's brand new soft floor models, the Buckland, through its paces. And I'm here to tell you that it's a pretty impressive bit of kit. It all starts with a solid foundation, and the Buckland chassis is as tough as they come. The 50 by 100 drawbar extends a good two metres beyond the body of the trailer which not only makes the buckling easy to tow and reverse, it's also as stable as you like. Lightweight alloy checker plate panels help keep the weight down to just 750 kilos, and the solid construction means that it's able to take another 750 kilos of gear on board. The suspension system is a simple but strong seven leaf pack with a couple of stout shocks to help keep the buckling in check. But one of my favorite parts is just how much room this beastie has inside. There's a full-size queen bed on board and heaps of living area both inside and outside. The Buckland comes with a kitchen and even holders for jerry cans and gas bottles. And the Buckland SE and LX models even come with a huge handy toolbox. To find out more about the entire Buckland range, head to easytrail.com.au. Jamie and I are checking out the legendary Victorian high country. Last night we watched the sunset at the incredible Blue Rag Range track and then had a fantastic time driving back to our campsite in complete darkness. Driving after dark on a narrow track like this requires some serious lighting and both Jamie and I are well equipped for the job. After breaking camp early the next morning, it was time to head back through Talbotville continuing the Wanangatta Drive. Our first stop is Eaglevale, located on the Wanangatta River, about six kilometres east of the Crooked River Goldfields area. Good campsites are available at Eaglevale with plenty of wide open grassland area beside the river. Eaglevale is a popular stopping point on a trip to the Wanangatta Valley, and it's the last flat area before climbing the Eaglevale track to the top of the Cynthia Range and the long bumpy trip into the mountains. Surrounded on all sides by forbidding mountains, Wanangatta Station, near the junction of Clungomeret Creek and Wanangatta River, was the home of the pioneer Bryce family for many years. In 1917, the station manager and cook disappeared and were later found to have been murdered. Nearly a century later, the crimes remain unsolved. Although the homestead burnt down in 1957, the ruins are still clearly visible and the nearby cemetery contains the graves of settlers and their children. You know, I love all the stories in the Victorian high country. There's just so many. Mate, wait till we hit the hut. I know that's what you're really hanging out for. Yeah, can't wait to do that. Are we going to do that, Savi, or? Mate, I reckon we go set up camp, hit the tracks first thing in the morning. I'm good for that.